Hey everybody, hope you're doing pretty well. Steve's back and it's time to do the Battle Magic Secrets post so that I can get that cool vote from the team. And this time they also asked us to go over the Rise of Commons, which is a rule set that really equalizes things for some of the people that don't own epic and legendary cards. So it's pretty cool to see this rule set sometimes if you're someone who doesn't have some of those best cards in the game. But do you have the best cards in the game for this mode? We're going to go over that. But first, as a little bonus, I don't think I'm going to do a full video for this. We had Bulldog get support to put out his proposal again to swap the, the USDC that is inside the DAO for DEC. I have downvoted this. I am not for this. Just a quick thing. Right now, the down votes are about the same. Uh, 9 million down here, but you do have 44 million up. So it looks like it will make it to being a full proposal again. And, uh, you know, good for them for trying this again, but I just don't support the DAO owning DEC. And that's the end of it for me. They don't, I don't want them to become a whale holding a whole bunch of DEC when DEC is the token that we burned SPS to make. I want them holding SPS. And if for some reason, if they need DEC, they'll just burn some of that SPS for DEC. That doesn't hurt us as players of the economy. But if you get into any other situation here, guys, where the DAO needs funding for something it wants to do, it'll, e it'll either have to give people DEC that they will dump, or it will have to use DEC and dump it on our heads. And this game doesn't give out DEC as rewards, except for to the leaderboards, which in my mind we should be getting rid of. But at the same time... <laughs> they, we give out SPS. So I'm standing with Claiborne on this. He has a comment there. We should be buying SPS. We shouldn't be buying DEC. And that that's that's where I'm going to be on that. And we'll probably discuss it more tomorrow night on Into the Splinterverse. But let's go ahead and get into Rise of the Commons. What are the keys for Rise of the Commons? It's really, do you have the best legendary, I mean, non-legendary and epic cards to prepare really good teams. Now I'll tell you, for me, when I get into Legends of the Commons, this is one of the few times in my mind, uh, our Rise of the Commons, I mean, that um, Death is pretty good and Fire is actually pretty good. The reason why Fire becomes pretty good is because they actually have some pretty cool cards in this common common and rare collection. I've went ahead and as you can see, we're, we're looking at Modern again. We're only listen, looking at Common and Rare and we're going to go ahead and talk about some of the cards that can make Fire really good. Obviously, the Living Lava is still in Modern, but even when it goes away, you have here the Ferox Defender. On top of that, you have some of the other best cards in the game, but the these ones are also kind of more expensive. You got Ass Mirage, you got Finish Rage, you can still throw out a Tinder Block, you've still got the Striker, so those are cards that are very good. You still got Serpent Spy, you've still got Flame Monkey. You can still put together a very good team, and when we look at the Summoners, it's a very good team for Tarsa. There's a lot of Malay cards in there. It's still very competitive. Not, not a bad team at all that can be thrown together with fire. Who else has a pretty good team? All right, so we kind of looked over the fire team. I'm not going to comment here too much on the neutrals. We'll take a look at them at the end, but we don't want to be here all day on this part of it. We are just supposed to be doing a quick review of battle post. Well, you can still play Kelia, so that makes blue competitive for sure. You still have cards like Flying Squid and Deep Lurker. These are more affordable for the people that don't have them. You can still use cards like Somp Sweater and Coastal Sentry if you have them and you have them leveled up. Those cards are really good. You also have the, co the co Coastal Nymph which I would say this card is not that good for most people. They don't use it a lot. But in high mana matches of Rise of the Commons, having some cards in this 9-10 range that you can actually play is, is an advantageous for sure. Um, also, of course, Demon Shark is still here. So basically some very key points, the Guardian, a Angelic Guardian. I mean, a lot of these are here, but it is missing one of the cards that makes them a lot better for like that classic blue deck in Wave Brood. So when you don't have that taunt option to keep them off of like magic damage destroying your Demon Shark, you, you could be in trouble. Quickly looking at the Earth team. I mean, they, I feel like they do okay here if you have the right cards. There is cards like the Pelicor Mercenary. You still have the Psychic, but you, you lose some very important cards. Queen Masselia being gone is not good for them. 
Um, you also lose some of their better summoners that, that people like to play. Obviously, you could still go a pretty decent magic team here with Oblivion. And if you have them, you can play uh, Mylor. And you still have, like, for the low mana teams. But, you, you know, you lose the Acid Shooter. You lose Queen Massilia. You lose just some very important pieces to the puzzle on green. So I don't usually run to them. They're not my first option for sure. I do like Death. I like Death because a lot of their cards in, in the in the uh, common and rare range are really good when it comes to tanking and support tanking. The main cards I'm talking about here are Nightmare and um, Cursed Windeku. They also have the Arcane Thug if you've leveled it up is a great little reach monster. You also still have Queen of the Crows, but again, Death is a little bit on the more expensive side. You still have the Silent Chevy. You still have the Night Ghoul if you wanted to play it. And then there was another card I wanted to highlight here that I oh right here the striker for the for the no, for the not missing and you do have their new armor giver right here for the the Ravenhood warden which makes cards like Wendeku so if you do like a Wendeku arcane thug and you have you have this opportunity to inspire here and then you got like five damage on your first two front takes and it's only twelve and then you've also got armor for them armor for Wendeku. If it's higher mana, you can put a Queen of Crows in the background. So th this is stuff that's kind of interesting, but also because um, anytime like some of the better legendary cards are taken away from the other team, I feel like death gets an advantage just because when I add their legendaries back in, they, they don't, they're probably some of the weaker legendaries out there. I mean, Ra misses a lot. Lyra the Dark, you would think this card would be amazing, and it is kind of good, but I don't know. Whenever I seem to try to use it, it doesn't have the kind of win percentage I would want. People are under-impressed with Kane Haste. Uh, Mimosa doesn't do that good. Uh, so I feel like when you do play Death, you don't really concentrate on the legendary cards anyways. Their epics are really good, though, so that's where they take a little bit of a hit. And then the last team we'll talk about, and even though I do think I talked about just about all of them now is the life team why is the life team still here is actually gone last this is actually one of my favorite teams to use here because you still have the shield bearer you still have the crystal smith you still have truth speaker hiding here somewhere um, I'm a little bit blind there it is so you can still do a shield bearer um, kind of healing tank you can use corsair boson as another way to have a cleanse and as a in a higher mana range you also have the war pegasus coming in now is a very good card if you don't want to go him you still have cards like the dry bone razor or the imperial knight and then you have cards like chaos knight i mean there's just so many good cards still in play here and while you don't for me, the reason why they're still so playable is because when it comes to the summoners, I do have a Lorna, and Lorna isn't a bad one at all for this rule set. So let's go ahead and get into my battle. <laughs> Sorry, had to sneeze. That wasn't great. I'll have to do a little refresh here. My recent battles aren't showing up. I almost battled this battle I wanted to share with you guys off of the screen. So we're going to go down to the bottom here and we're going to do a replay. So in this one, you can see that we had kind of an interesting little play. Let me get the rules set up here. So we do have Rise of the Commons and we also have Fog of War. This was an interesting play and my opponent did make an interesting mistake on the Fog of War. I don't know, you know, maybe with no bots and no battle helpers in modern, we're going to see mistakes like this more often. Or does this make it look like this person possibly did a battle helper lineup and wasn't really paying attention to the rule set? Because I know like when you're using battle helper, you only might pay attention to the mana. Then you put in the helper and then it gives you a team and you just put it in. And that would be kind of interesting here because in this battle, I think you can, can, can kind of see that he decided to go into the, the cave slug. Now, obviously in Rise of the Commons, you can still do legendary summoners. I think my first part of this show, I forgot about that just because they were filtered off. It's just a little bit better to look at the cards that they can use. But we have, so we have a kitty team here with a shield bearer. And then you have behind it another heal, a cleanse. So double cleansing heal. This card is under leveled, so he doesn't have the triage. He also went with a shatter and he went with a speed up and a slow. But this monster can't attack. Now on my side, I went with 
the <laughs> with Chansey is here with a replacement for the shield bear. The reason why I did this is because I didn't really feel like playing the shield bear in this situation because there were still a mag teams that might bring some magic to this fight. So I, I didn't want to have a tank that would get erased by magic. So I decided to go here with the Imperial Knight instead. Now this does give me a double heal because he has a double heal here with Kitty in here. I have a self heal and a heal. I decided to go with the Scalvo Technomancer. This was to hopefully get rid of an armor buff and add a blind into the situation. Then I went for a card with Scattershot. The Scattershot I went for a way to actually hit in the back row in a uh, Fog of War rule set. And then I went with this guy for the Shatter and for the Repair because I wanted the Repair on the Magical Armor. Now, as you can see, it's not great that I'm going to be running into a Shield Bearer, but at least he will be Shattering Armor. So let's go ahead and watch this battle to see how it ends up playing out. Also, as you can see here, I do have a triage in the back that's going to help a little bit with any arrows that come backwards. And I do have a resurrect. So you're going to have to kill my guys twice. All of these guys on this side, no resurrects. So we'll go ahead and watch the fight. We're actually going to slow it down to just double speed here so I can actually narrate things a little bit better. You can see that this guy does get that slow in. But and, and then there's the shatter. So as you can see, my tank did get pretty darn beat up. But luckily, I get that shatter and repair in. in. He gets his armor back. He self heals. We get our little splash damage here. That was huge because the splash damage there took out the true speaker because this attack went after the true speaker. And that takes out one of his double heals. Now, as you can see, I was all healed up by the time. And so I've locked myself into a pretty good situation. He doesn't have enough damage with that one guy not attacking. And once again, my portal spinner did what I want. It got somebody in the back row. We do have a problematic nine speed card here. But in the end, my turtle, my turtle setup is working good enough to hold him off. Now there I got maybe that's lucky or unlucky we went ahead and hit here since he's down to just the one healer that was actually good that the portal spinner did that because we do have enough damage to get through the shield bearer now yeah, my portal spinner actually did things amazingly this time except for maybe that attack but when it was time for he didn't hit the shield bearer early when i didn't want him to and then he started hitting him a little bit later on in the fight as you saw let's see here i don't think this took too many more rounds Right here, we take out his repair. The magic damage takes that out. And then she, you know, she is pretty fast and it's gonna be hard for most of my team to hit, but luckily it doesn't have phase. So we're gonna get a miss, a miss, a miss, and a hit. <laughs> so that's just the, the reality here is I just need one of them to hit, but luckily I have enough back back level repairs and I, I do get a hit there and now it's just going to be picking on this slug to finish off the fight so it was overall a pretty dominating win a, a, an example of a almost shield bearer s turtle setup beating an actual shield bearer turtle setup uh, the person did have some under level cards and they did make one mistake. I mean, let's face it, if they would have had a card in that last position that would have been attacking, and I don't know why I got pulled into the tournament screen there. Um, if they would have had one more card that was attacking here instead of a cave slug, they probably could have uh, got through my tank and my double tur turtle mode wouldn't have worked. And also if my tr if my portal spinner would have been a little bit more unlucky on my side and wouldn't have taken helped me take out the truth seeker and the, and the herbalist a lot easier combined with the blast damage, then I, things could have been a little bit different. But in the end, I got a nice win, and I hope you guys enjoyed that. If you decided to hang out to the end, thank you very much, and have a good day.